Angus gave us a great head start into the important characteristics that enable us to identify plants. The shapes of flowers, the way that they are arranged, the plant habit, the bark, the shapes of the leaves. Let's have a closer look at some of the variations that plants have in these characters and let's give them some names. By observing those characteristics closely and giving them the correct name, we can describe them more accurately. One of the most powerful tools for describing plants is illustration, and many of the wonderful illustrations in this presentation come from this book, Name That Flower by Ian Clark and Helen Lee. One of the key characters for identifying plants is how the flowers are arranged in a plant. In this fabulous stylidium, the flowers are arranged on a spike in a specialised stalk called a scape. But let's look at some other ways that flowers are arranged. The simplest way is to have a flower originating in the leaf axle on a flower stalk or pedicel. And that, of course, is a solitary flower. The next simplest is to replace that single flower with a branching system of flowers. And that is a raceme. And we can get more and more complicated by replacing each of those single flowers in a raceme with another raceme, and that we have a raceme of racemes or a panicle. By altering the lengths of those flower stalks, we can create a whole range of different inflorescences. So we can have a spike where we shrink all of those peduncles down to nothing, or pedicels down to nothing or a head where they arrange them all on a single plane, on a receptacle. And we could make all of the pedicels the same length and originating from the same spot and get an umbrella-like umbel. And or alternatively, make all the flower stalks different lengths but have all the flowers on a single plane, in which case you get a corym using a whole range of different sort of inflorescences with very simple changes. Those are all racemos inflorescences. You can also have cymos inflorescences. And these differ because the leading shoot is terminated with a flower. So the oldest flower is always in the centre of the inflorescences. But you can get similar sorts of inflorescences in cymos inflorescences. Flowering plants share a common structure to their flower based on this archetypal blueprint. The flower has a stalk, uh, the pedicel, and an attachment point where all the four flower whorls are inserted, and that's called the receptacle. The four whorls are always inserted in the same order. There's First world is of sepals. Now often green and leaf-like, but not always. Usually the showy parts of the flower are the coloured petals, as in poppies. Then the male parts of the flower, the stamens, which bear the pollen, and the, in the centre of the flower, the carpels contain the ovules. Now from that basic archetypal flower, every part can be varied to give us the extraordinary diversity that we see in flower types. So you can alter the length of the flower stalk from pedicel, and in this case by reducing it down to nothing so that these flowers are sessile. And the dandelion picture here is an extreme case of sessile flowers all arranged on a specialised inflorescence stalk called the scape. In flowers, it's usually the corolla or the petals that are 
bright and colourful, but not always. Sometimes the showy role is taken by the normally green sepals. But the collective term for the two outer worlds of the flower is the perianth. The calyx is the outermost world of sepals and the corolla is the next innermost world of petals. And usually the number of sepals is the same as the number of petals. The petals can vary enormously in shape as well as colour and can sometimes fuse to form these corolla tubes. Sometimes the sepals and the petals are difficult to distinguish as in lilies and these are called tepals. We always think of flowers as being radially symmetrical as in this beautiful baronia flower. You can divide this beautiful baronia flower down any of these axes and get equal halves. This is called a radial flower. But in some families, such as the Scofiariaceae or Plantagenaceae as it is now, as in this lovely Veronica, you can only divide it down in one way and get two equal halves. And this is called bilateral symmetry or a bilateral flower. This illustration shows a range of those radial and bilateral flower shapes, but there are many other descriptors, so that the corolla may be bell-shaped, as in this campanula flower, or it might be wheel-shaped, as in this rotate corolla. The petals might also have claws, or as we said before, fused into these tubular shapes. The male part of the flower are collectively referred to as the andresium, and each stamen consists of the anther, which is the pollen bearing part, and the filament. And lastly, right in the middle of the flower is the female part of the flower, the gynesium. This is comprised of one or more carpels. with the, the elongated style and the stigmatic surface on top that receives the pollen. These carpels may be single, or they may be fused. Next time you're chopping a piece of fruit in half, or a tomato or a capsicum, have a look to see how many carpels were in that flower. Another important clue for identifying plants from the flower is the position of the ovary relative to the insertion of the other floral whorls on the receptacle. So the ovary could be superior if it's above where the other floral whorls join, inferior if it is below, or half inferior if it's intermediate between the two. Another way of describing this flower is to say if the flower is hypogynous, so the ovary is sitting above the level of insertion of the other flower parts, or epigynous if the sepals and the petals appear to come from the top of the ovary, or perigynous if the other floral parts appear to be fused into a cup and surround that ovary. Most flowers contain both sexes, they're bisexual, but some species have separate male and female flowers. These two sorts of flowers can be on the same plant, but separated in location, such as in sweet corn or hazels, and these are called monoecious plants. Other cases, a species may have separate boy plants and girl plants, as in these samphire plants. So you can see here, there's a little pollen bearing anthers on the boys and these little feathery stigmas on the girls. In this case, the plants are called dioecious.